I'm going to be talking about Dory, an encrypted search system with distributed trust. Over the last few years, end-to-end -end encrypted systems have grown increasingly popular. One example of these is end-to-end -end encrypted file systems like Keybase, Prevail, SpiderOak, Sync, and Trezor. These systems provide strong security guarantees even if the attacker compromises the server. The client has a cryptographic key, and the server just has ciphertexts that it can't decrypt. Users have grown accustomed to the ability to search over their documents. So given some keyword Apple, they expect to get back all the documents containing that keyword. This is a challenge for end-to-end -end encrypted file systems. The server can't decrypt the documents in order to search over their contents. For the past few decades, academics have studied the problem of searching over encrypted data. And existing solutions generally fall into one of two categories. And the first are searchable encryption schemes that are efficient but leak search access patterns. In the second category are ORAM-based solutions that are inefficient but protect search access patterns. To understand the trade-off between these two, I'm going to explain a bit what exactly search access patterns are and the risk that they pose. I'm going to start off by discussing uh, search access patterns and compare them to the leakage in many end-to-end -end encrypted file systems. So let's say the user wants to read some document three from an end-to-end -end encrypted file system. It's going to request that document from the server, and the server is going to learn that the user requested document three, but it's not going to learn any information about the contents of that document because the document itself was encrypted. Uh, now let's say um, the user wants to search over a leaky search system. So it searches for the keyword Apple, sends the search request, and the danger is that the server starts to learn information at the word level of the document. So it's no longer learning just that the document was accessed, but it's now starting to learn information within the document contents itself. So to make this a bit more concrete, I'm going to show an example of how search access patterns can be used to recover document plain text in an example file injection attack. So let's say we have some attacker that's compromised the server, and the attacker can also send the user emails um, that the user will then upload to the search index. Um, so let's say the attacker sends the user the one word email, flu. Um, the attacker uploads this email to the search index. The server updates row three of the search index. And so the attacker knows that the word flu is associated with row three. The attacker can repeat this process for all the words in the English dictionary to learn the mapping between the word and the row in the search index. Now, at some later point, the, uh, the user receives a confidential email. The attacker watches the search index, the search index updates row three, and so the attacker knows that the document contains the word flu, and in this way has learned information about the plain text of a document when the document was supposed to remain encrypted. Now, there are many more attacks against different types of search schemes, leveraging different types of leakage, um, but at their core, they allow the attacker to learn information about the document plain text or the keyword being searched for. So given the dangers of search access patterns, we might be inclined to consider ORAM-based solutions. The ORAM is a generic primitive that allows a client to read and write data at the server while hiding access patterns. And we can implement search by building an inverted index in ORAM. This saves the advantage that, that the runtime is logarithmic in the index size. However, large constants and even the most practical ORAM schemes make the cost prohibitive for end-to-end -end encrypted file systems. Um, so on the one hand, we have efficient schemes uh, that leak, ac leak, leak search access patterns, so searchable encryption. And on the other hand, we have inefficient schemes that protect search access patterns, ORAM-based solutions. And so we introduced Dory, which is both efficient while protecting search access patterns. So Dory is going to replace a leaky search system that leaks information at the word level. And Dory is going to ensure that the attacker learns no information beyond the leakage already inherent in the end-to-end -end encrypted file system, as well as when a user searches and the documents that the search is taking place over. So to tackle this problem and understand this trade-off between efficiency and search access pattern leakage, we return to the system model. And we ask, what do real end-to-end -end encrypted file systems require from a search system? To answer this question, we surveyed five companies providing end-to-end -end encrypted file systems. 
so key base, prevail, spider oak, sink, and treasurit. We learned that each wanted server-side search, but didn't have a solution deployed because of concerns about search access patterns or performance. So I don't have time to discuss the full set of quantitative and qualitative findings that are detailed in the paper, including requirements for latency, cost, and concurrency. I'm just going to discuss the two most relevant findings for Dory's design now. The first is that a linear scan for search is acceptable if certain latency and cost requirements are met for expected workloads. And we, de we detail these requirements and expected workloads in the paper. The second is that distributing trust is acceptable if certain security requirements are met. I'm going to unpack the second finding a bit more carefully now. So by distributing trust, I mean that we're going to provide certain security guarantees, even if an attacker can compromise some, but not all elements in the system. And we're going to organize these elements in the system into different trust domains, where the idea is that even if, it, even if an attacker can compromise elements in one trust domain, it's not straightforward to compromise the elements in a separate trust domain. So these trust domains might be deployed in different clouds, potentially managed by different organizations, maybe even in different countries. So these companies were fine with us using distributed trust for search, but they had two key requirements. So the first requirement is that if at least one trust domain is honest, meaning it follows the protocol and isn't compromised, the attacker shouldn't be able to learn search access patterns. This means that we need to consider malicious rather than an honest but curious threat model, because we don't want to make assumptions about the behavior of other trust domains. The second requirement is if there are no honest trust domains, the attacker shouldn't be able to directly assemble the search index. So in this case, search access or not access patterns are not protected, but we want to provide um, some extra layer of protection and ensure that if an attacker gets the information in all the servers, it can immediately assemble the search index. Um, so given these two requirements, I'm now going to discuss how we design Dory. Um, so multiple clients are going to interact with Dory servers distributed across multiple trust domains. And we can place the file system server in any trust domain because it doesn't rely on distributed trust. Um, so now I'm going to talk about how we build Dory, starting off with a simplified version and slowly adding on different layers as we approach different challenges. So we're going to construct our search index as an n by m bit matrix, where there are n documents, and each row is an m bit bitmap for all the keywords in that document. So given this structure, updates are pretty straightforward. So a client is just going to create the bitmap corresponding to the keywords, uh, then sends the server the corresponding bitmap along with the document ID. The server then updates the bitmap at the corresponding row. This is a pretty straightforward update process. Um, the client only has to send a small amount of constant size amount of data along with its update to the server whenever it pushes the update onto um, the document itself to the underlying end-to-end -end encrypted file system. Searches are also fairly straightforward. So given a keyword, the client is going to compute the bitmap index for that keyword and send the index to the server. The server is then going to respond with the corresponding column and then the client is going to output all the row numbers where the column value is 1. Um, and this gives us the nice property that the server responds with the smallest amount of information uh, for the query results without leaking the number of, key of documents that match a keyword. And the number of documents that match a keyword can be leveraged in volume-based attacks. So we want to prevent these types of attacks. So the first challenge with this basic scheme uh, is that it does not in fact hide search access patterns. So an attacker learns the column requested, which leaks data about the keyword that we're searching for. Um, so we wanna hide this information in some way. And we identify distributed point functions or DPFs as particularly well suited for our setting. DPFs are going to allow us to use multiple servers to hide which element in an array the user is retrieving. So two servers are going to have identical copies of this array um, and the user is going to want to retrieve some element, but the, uh, we don't want either server to be able to learn which element the user is retrieving. And this gives us the property that if at least one of these servers is honest, the attacker can't learn the index that's being requested. Um, one disadvantage of this solution is that it does require a linear scan over the entire array. 
However, the scan is pretty fast to implement in practice because it just requires AES evaluations, which can be implemented efficiently in hardware. Um, so let's say the user wants to retrieve element A2. So it's going to generate DPF keys that it sends to both servers. And then each server is going to evaluate its DPF key on each element of the array. So it's going to perform the linear scan. Um, it sends back responses. And using those responses, the user can assemble this original element A2. So now I'm going to discuss how we leverage these DPFs in order to search in Dory. And this gives us the property that if at least one trust domain is honest, then Dory is going to hide search access patterns. So before, remember, we just had one server that had a copy of the search index. And now we're going to have multiple servers um, split across multiple trust domains. And each server is going to have an identical copy of the search index. So now to search, as before, the client is going to get the index corresponding to the keyword. It's then going to generate DPF keys for that index, which it's going to send to each server. Each server is going to evaluate its DPF key on each column, performing a linear scan. It's going to send the responses back. And the client can assemble the original column and then output the matches. Um, so in this way, uh, the client is still able to learn the matches, but neither server learns which index is being requested, which hides information about the keyword that the user is searching for. So the second challenge that we want to address is how we compress this search index. So a bitmap that contains every word in the English dictionary becomes large. Um, and so this means that the linear scan for search takes a long time because we need to iterate over every column in the search index. And so we want to compress the number of columns. And so to do this, we're going to use Bloom filters. And Bloom filters allow us to implement efficient membership testing. So for each keyword in the document, we're going to hash it to different locations in the Bloom filter. And we're going to set these values to one. So we're going to do this for each keyword. Um, and then we can upload the corresponding Bloom filter to the search index. And this means that instead of bitmaps, we're going to use these much smaller Bloom filters. Um, this gives us a nice property that it preserves search column alignment, which is necessary for our distributed point functions. So now, instead of retrieving a single column, as was the case for bitmaps, we're going to retrieve multiple columns. So all the indices that a keyword hashes to. It also provides compression. So these Bloom filters are much smaller than the corresponding bitmaps. Um, and so the search latency is much lower as a result. Uh, it also means that we don't have a fixed dictionary. So we don't have to commit to the set of keywords that a user can search for up front. The third challenge that I want to talk about is how we're going to encrypt the search index. So recall that one of our requirements was that an attacker shouldn't be able to immediately learn the contents of the search index. Um, and as it stands, a user that breaks into even one of the servers can learn a Bloom filter corresponding to the keywords in that document immediately. Um, so one way we could try to address this is by encrypting every bit in the Bloom filter. Remember that we can't encrypt a row at a time because we need to be able to retrieve individual columns for searching. However, the solution is going to cause our search index size to blow up by a factor of our security parameter. And we just did all this work to compress the search index and now we're going to blow it up by potentially 128 bits. Um, so we want to reduce the size as much as possible um, to reduce the amount of data that's stored at the server and the search latency. So instead, what we're going to do is we're going to generate a unique one-time pad using the document version number that's maintained by the underlying file system. So now we just need to XOR the original search index um, with this pad generated uh, using a PRF in the document version number. And this is going to ensure that the search index uh, remains encrypted. Um, and this makes it easy for the client to then just decrypt the search results if it has access to this document version number. The fourth challenge that I want to discuss is how we defend against malicious attackers. Um, so recall that we want to consider a malicious attacker model rather than an honest but curious one. So an attacker that can deviate arbitrarily from the protocol. So to handle this type of attacker, we need to allow the client to check the integrity of the results that it receives. One straightforward way to do this would, would be to use a message authentication code, or MAC, for every bit in the search index. Um, so when a client sends an update, it's going to send a MAC for every bit in the update. And then when a client retrieves a column, it's going to retrieve a MAC with each bit. Um, 
The problem here is that as before, now we're going to see the search index flow by a factor of our security parameter. So we're keeping track of not just each bit in the security index, but also its corresponding MAC tag. Um, this is going to cause uh, the search latency to increase drastically as well. So you want to reduce um, the amount of information that we need to authenticate the search responses as much as possible. And so what we do is we leverage aggregate MACs in order to keep a single MAC tag per column. These aggregate MACs are going to allow us to aggregate together the MACs for different values in the same column into one single MAC that can be used to check every value. Um, so with an update, um, the client is going to send um, an update to the MAC tag for each column. Um, and then for a search, the client only has to retrieve one single MAC tag uh, for the entire column. So this is going to reduce both the search latency and the bandwidth. So there's some other contributions that I don't have time to discuss now, um, including efficient user revocation, an extension to oblivious file systems, as well as efficient replication that leverages Dory's cryptographic properties. Now I'm going to move on to talking about the implementation and evaluation. We implemented Dory and open sourced it and passed artifact evaluation. We also evaluated our performance using the Enron email data set, which is commonly used to evaluate searchable encryption schemes. We compared Dory's performance to two baselines. So first, a plain text search baseline, that's just an inverted index without any encryption. And we also compared it to an ORAM baseline. It's an inverted index in path ORAM, which we detail in the paper but provides security guarantees comparable to those of Dory. In the paper, we also compare Dory's performance to two other baselines that I don't have time to discuss now. So we're going to start off by looking at search latency. Here, both axes are using a logarithmic scale. Um, and we can see that while Dory is in the range of a, of a few seconds for large numbers of documents, around a million, um, our ORAM baseline has much higher search latency, so in the range of thousands of seconds, so well outside the company's requirements. So in particular, the difference between these two is around 185 times um, difference. However, a few seconds for even a million documents might actually be a lot for some users. And so we show that with parallelism, we're actually able to reduce the search latency for a million documents to around three seconds to under one second with forward parallelism. Um, so our parallelism is actually able to improve the search latency by roughly a factor of our degree of parallelism because the search time is dominated by this linear scan for large numbers of documents. So our protocol is highly parallel, it's highly parallelizable across both uh, multiple threads and multiple servers. We also measure the throughput on a variety of workloads. Here I'm showing a workload of 50% updates and 50% searches um, because that's what the company's expected. Um, and both axes are using a logarithmic scale. And we can see that while Dory's throughput does decrease as the number of documents that it's searching over increases, um, it's still much, much more efficient than the ORAM baseline. So there's an 85,000 difference in performance between the two. And this is largely due to the high uh, overhead of updates in ORAM. So in our ORAM baseline, an ORAM access is required for every keyword in a document. Um, and recall in Dory, it just requires a small constant size upload to the search index. Um, so this is responsible for the large difference uh, in throughput, even larger than what we saw for the search latency. So we show that Dory is an efficient search system that hides search access patterns. By re-examining the system model, we're able to reconcile the tension between efficiency and search access pattern leakage. Dory shows that search should not be a barrier to the adoption of end-to-end -end encrypted file systems. Thanks.